I've got two videos playing on the screen. One of them is a video widget and one of them down here is a background video playing inside of an elemental container. But do you notice that they both have a pause button? We've got one over here and we've got one here. I'm going to go and pause this video and it turns into a play and it's now completely paused. And I can do the same to the background. Imagine this is like a video for your hero banner. For some people, they don't actually want to have a video playing especially when it gets to a mobile. So you want to make it really easy for them to pause and play at any time they want, just like what I'm doing here, without having controls that might be in the center of the screen or at the bottom that might interfere, say, with your call to action button or your headline and your subheadline and things like that. It's actually really simple to add these pause buttons to your video, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's start with the video widget at the top first. It sits inside of a container that's only 400 widgets. Don't worry about your whip. You set it to what works for you. I've also just got this set as a column direction because inside of here, I have my video. It's not a bad idea to mute your videos unless you intend for the sound to be heard. Now, this is using a self-hosted video. If you are going to use this or apply this method for a YouTube video or a Vimeo, please take the HTML code that I'm going to provide to you and go and stick that in chat GPT because it will need to tweak it to work. However, if you're using a self-hosted video, by the way, this is a six second video, just under two megabytes in size. It's only six seconds, right? You know, it's got some footage playing like that. Don't add in or self-host really long videos if your intention is just to get across a certain message. Be very mindful about this. And it still looks good on a background container, even though it's only two megabytes. Anyway, back to the container. We got a video in the advanced tab, though. You want to make sure you give it the class name video pause. If you want to change the class name, you can do that. Just make sure you reflect that inside of the code I'm going to share with you. Now, you will notice that we do have two icons. Now, I did build out the code where the icons were inside of the code, but then I felt like maybe if you're trying to have a particular look for your pause and play buttons, maybe to fit your branding, it can become a little bit annoying because if I'm using font awesome codes inside the code, and then you go, right, now I need to add in my SVG and you've only got an SVG and you haven't got it in code format, it can play a little bit of a problem later on. Well, not really, but I didn't want to overcomplexicate the code. So what I have here is an icon for the pause button and an icon for the play button. OK, these will be inside of it. Play, pause, whatever. You can easily get them. There are a few things you do have to apply to the icon. Let me just make clear, though, that you can do what you want with the styling in terms of transparency. I've made it be a little bit transparent, but you can also align them. So let me just click on the play button. If I go to the pause button, I change the alignment. You're not going to see anything because at the moment I've gone and paused it. So let me just show you with the play button. If I go in left align that you can see it's moved over to the left. You could have centralized it as well. You can use some absolute positioning if you want. I do use absolute positioning though when we get down here just to show you different ways of using it. But for this example with the video widget, it's just right aligned. I've also gone and applied in a bit of right margin. So if I go and hit zero, you can see now it's right up against the border. 23 worked quite well with what I was doing here. I've also made sure the icons are not too small. Don't get, don't get into that habit of making it really small because you want to see as much footage as possible. Otherwise, you're kind of defeating the purpose of why you've added the pause button into there in the first place. Now, the other thing you need to do, and you might have noticed it already, is for the pause button, go and call it pause hyphen BTN button. And for the play button, call it play hyphen BTN. Again, if you change these, reflect it inside of the code. Both icons have a Z index of 10, so they sit in front of the video. Now, you're probably wondering, how are they in front of the video? Because I'm not using absolute. If I go to the video, uh, we do have a minus 87 on the top. So if I go and pop zero, the icons are now over there and the videos there. That's not that too tricky to kind of implement. And you could modify that, you know, so if I was to now reduce that, you're going to see what, in fact, I went the wrong way. If we go that way, you can see it's now adjusting. Let's just pop that back to be 87. Now, the key bit is the HTML widget, okay? That is what you have over here. And if the, you don't need to change anything in here, if I'm really brutally honest, unless you go and change the IDs or the class names then reflect it in the code. But this is the code that's basically going to power what we have going on here. That's how plain and simple it is. So that's the code you would use here 
for this particular video widget. But if you were going to do the pause and play button on a background container, the code is slightly different. OK, so this is the code you would use for a video widget. And I'll make that clear when I do the video links. Uh, and by the way, the video, sorry, the code is stored in the code snippet uh, website. If you've never signed up to code snippets, it's free to sign up. OK, and then you get access to all of the code snippets I'm giving you. Anyway, we've got a container over here. It's currently set to full width. We go to the style tab. Again, I'm using my uh, stock video, you know, two megabytes. So it plays pretty quick. I dropped in a heading onto the container just to show you the power of using the video as a background container. Again, we have two icons. And if we go over to the content tab, it's the same thing with the pause and play button. You go and style it how you want. The difference bow here in this advanced one is I went and used absolute because um, now before we had a video widget, so I could do a minus top margin to get the overlay effect. When you're doing it on a background container, and now you're going to want items inside of there, you could, if you want, you know, build out your container, so space between. But depending on how many items you have in here, you might find it's easier just to go and use absolute. And you would adjust that for the mobile as well. So just, you know, if you're going to, so if I just go and pick absolute here, which is what it was, I then offset it to be uh, 25 pixels from the right and 25 pixels from the top. And you would go and pick your settings over here. So if I was to go and pick uh, this one for the, let me get the right icon because I've gone and picked the wrong one now. If I go and do that, you can see the play button has moved all the way over to the right. Let me just make sure I've got those all in the right place. And again, uh, make sure you give your IDs over here. So I've got pause button two. And for the play button, I've got play button two. Why have I got play button two or the number two? Because I've got two codes on the same page. And I'll make sure that we don't start hitting both of them when I'm dropping in HTML. It's just for the purpose of the tutorial. But you could get rid of the number two if you want and then reflect it inside of the code. It's dead easy to go and modify. And then I just dropped in a HTML widget into the container and here's the code. Now, this code is practically the same as what we had above for the pause and play functionality, but there is a difference. Over here, we now have the uh, class name for the container, and that is going to be different for every container that you go and build. And I bet there's a much easier way to implement this, so go and drop it in the comments. I'd love to read and learn about it. But what you need to do, quite simply, is go and preview your page, like what we're doing here right click and inspect on the particular container and you will see here it instantly does it if you right click on the container you don't have to start moving around you'll already be on top of it you can see the code there eb6f186 you take that bit of the id and just make sure you pop it in there and that's it so now at any time if the viewer or the visitor wants to read the content but they don't want the video playing in the background they can just go and pause it and they can unpause at any time and look it it, it doesn't reset itself. So it's not like when you hit play, it goes back to the start. You hit play, it resumes from where it was. Okay, look, I'll show you again. If I pause there, watch the hand over there. When I hit play, it resumes at that particular point. Really simple and easy to add a pause and play button to your video. But please remember, if you've got a YouTube video or a Vimeo or Daily Motion or something, take the code, stick it into some AI explain you're using YouTube now and not a self-hosted video and it will tweak it for you, okay? I only went with self-hosted mainly because if I was going to use a background video, I strongly recommend you use a self-hosted solution or a solution from somewhere else because YouTube can be a right pain in the ass with the controls and logo you get. And even Vimeo, I know it's a bit more simplified, but the controls you get with the bar and the pause and the play, it can, in my opinion, add a bit of interference when you're doing a hero banner video. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon.